Good morning. Good morning to you. Mother Gail Trailer here with Just In Case. How are you, children? You okay? How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. All is well. I uh, slept soundly. I hope you did. Today is Wednesday, another top of the morning to you. It is January 22nd in the year of our Lord is 2020 and it's cold, yes. I went for my walk this morning and um, it's not as cold as it has been. I'd say it's about maybe 30. Well, thank God for the 30. I enjoyed the brisk. Uh, because it's, it's, I think I expect it. And when it doesn't come, I'm kind of got one eyebrow raised, you know. Yeah. Golly, you know. I, we don't get cool soon. We're in big trouble. You know, you just, that mindset that hindsight you know that's what we're going to talk about hindsight you know the older we get the more uh, collective thinking we have uh, we, we, we store memories and we have a tendency to kind of lean on that old mindset. But before we get into what this mind sets itself on, we're going to pray. Come along with me. If you can, bow your head. If you cannot, just listen. Just listen. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day, this Wednesday, this 22nd day of January, this powerful and new year, 20 and 20, we ask you to forgive us for all unrighteousness, creating us clean hearts, we ask you to renew the right spirit in us, give us the mind, Father God, to walk in the spirit so we won't fulfill the lust of our flesh. Give us, Lord Jesus, this day our daily bread. Help us to forgive those who trespass against us. Please lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for this new day. It's a day we've never seen before. And we know, Father God, our times are in your hands. So bless us, bless our children, our children's children. Strengthen us, guide us, lead us. Use us, Father God, to bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. How was yesterday? I had a great day yesterday. Wow. It was awesome. It was really great, you know, like, I had uh, things I did I hadn't planned on doing. I just found myself doing it. And uh, I think I brought, well, I pray and hope I brought glory to God by the things that I did. I know I, I didn't want to do them, and if it was me, I wouldn't do nothing. Sometimes you just keep doing because you're led to do it. Remember, he's the boss of us. And if we ask, we asked him to help us to walk in the spirit, we're going to do just that. You're going to find yourself doing things that uh, I ain't plan on doing this. You know, you're just doing it. But we thank God. 
for the ability to do anything. Thank God for this day. And we're going to trust him one more day. And guess what? That's the uh, that's that's what we're gonna talk about. Leaning on, him. leaning on him. Did you know the Lord wants us to come to Him and trust Him and to, you know, call on Him when we need Him and, 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 and He wants us not to anticipate uh, what's ahead of us. Don't anticipate it. I was in thinking that yesterday I'd just go in to work and do, you know, what I generally do and uh, go somewhere and sit down. But that wasn't the case. And uh, when I was finished doing what I did, I felt good about it, you know, felt good about it. Because I had done a job worthy of God's grace and mercy. Just just worthy to put his seal upon. You know, it was what I think it was worthy. It brought him glory. Uh, I was reading um, at 365 day devotional and uh, Sarah Young uh, writes about two scriptures. Two scriptures. And one of them is found in, and let me turn to it, one of them is found in the Psalms. Okay? Uh, Psalms 52 and 8. And it says, But I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. And that's what we do from day to day. We trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. We trust in it. Um, sometimes you work for families that are, uh, they're assigned to you, okay, not only by the company, but you go into homes where Christ is not preached, you know, you, you kind of wish, but, uh, you're there and you're planted there and you're planting a seed, Planting seeds of righteousness. You're setting your uh, God's love upon that home. And sometimes the uh, person has children or they have loved ones. But you just, you know, you do what you do. And you know who's with you. Who's working inside of you. And because God set his love upon us, he did it. He put you there. We're strategically placed. And we're flourishing where we're placed. We are bringing forth the fruit that hangs from our trees. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an exposure to them, my computer's uh, being special today, so forgive me. Um, it's bringing forth fruits of righteousness, okay? For his name's sake, the Bible says. So, we're flourishing. We hit that mountaintop on Sunday when we go to church. And when we come down out of that mountain, out from the house of God, we trust in his, his unfailing love, and he uses us. You know, God not only just loved the household of faith or the, 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 the people in the temple, the Lord loves, loved, and still loves the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have uh, everlasting life. 
God so loved the world. So when we come down out of that temple and uh, we go into the world, we're letting our light shine, not because of anything else, but because he told us to, and we are availing ourselves to him because we are not our own. We're not the boss of us. And we flourish. You flourish. Okay? In Christ, you flourish. You bloom where you're planted. Hey, next scripture that I, I really hit me. Really, really, I mean, I thought about it. I dug in uh, some references about it is uh, when Solomon wrote in Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth through the sixth, sixth verse, it says, and I'm going to read from the King James Version first. Then I'm going to read from the Amplified Version next. Then I'm going to read the Easy to Read Version. And maybe out of one or two of those uh, writings, you can glean what the pro Solomon is saying. Solomon wrote, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Okay? Trust in the Lord. That that's we we heard that scripture. We throw it around, you know, but we don't really dig into it. Trust in the Lord. If you love someone, you will trust them. And sometimes we trust in things other than the Lord. And uh these things fail us. Let's say we're trusting in man. Oh, he said he's going to do this. We trust in, let's say, for instance, politicians. Okay. They say they're going to do this and they're going to, they promise us that. And we know that um, sometimes these promises cannot be kept. We make promises ourselves. I'm going I'm to send you something. You know, I'm good for that. And I, I try with all my might to, to fulfill my promise, but I, I fail. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to paint that wall and, 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 and do this and that and the other. And, and uh, sometimes I even, you know, I, I don't even want to look at the wall, let alone paint it, you know. But, we trust in people, we trust in ourselves, and we can't, we just don't fulfill our heart's desire, you know? But the Lord said, Solomon, the wisest man on earth, said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Then in the Amplified Version, it reads as follows. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight the plain, the plain, the plain, and plain your paths. He will make straight and plain your paths. Now, who wouldn't want to walk in a plain path? Okay? If, if you show me a rocky path or, or a path that's uh, passing by some, you know, hedges and, and, and growths and stuff, walking through this woods, I guarantee you I'm going to try to take the plainer path. And trusting in the Lord and being confident in the Lord with all your heart and all your mind, all your heart and your mind, and not relying on your own understanding, okay, 
is a great way to make it through this lifetime. And that was the amplified version. Now this is the easy read version. This is the simplest version in all of the dialects, all of the um, the written uh, uh, explanations of this verse. Listen to this. If that didn't hit you, that you didn't get that. Couldn't understand King, King James. Uh, couldn't quite follow the Amplified. This is the easiest to read version. It says, trust the Lord completely and don't depend on your own knowledge. With every step you take, think about what he wants and he will help you go the right way. Hallelujah. Oh, that's wonderful. Isn't that nice? Gosh, as I was working yesterday, I thought about what he would want. I thought about what I could do for my client that she would want done if she were able. And I put myself out of my own desires, my own heart's desires, and looked upon the needs of someone else. And that's what God wants us to do. There's a scripture verse for that. Don't look at your own desires, your own needs. There's somebody else that needs your help, needs your encouragement, needs your, your smile, needs your pat on the back, needs your help, needs your love. Okay. God, when, when God created this earth, and, and God, everlasting, sovereign, mighty, strong, deliverer, healer, he was everything in himself. He's everything. I am that I am. And because he, he was complete and entire and nothing lacking, he was whole. Okay? He thought outside of himself and created beauty, a world in which he placed somebody else outside of himself. Remember, he's God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They didn't need this earth. They didn't need man. But they did. They wanted man to enjoy creation. So they, he created man. Okay. He thought outside the box, me, myself, and I. He wanted to, them to enjoy life. To enjoy the abilities that he has. Creativity. Beauty. He wanted them and us to create. So we procreated children like he did and, and echoed through time. I mean, think about that. And that's what he wants us to do, to echo throughout time his mighty works and how good he is and how wonderful he is and what he can do through faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, blessed Savior, blessed Savior, what a mighty God we serve. Depending on your own understanding, that's the thing that I kind of dug up. And I wanted to know, well, why can't I trust in myself? You made me, Lord. You gave me a mind. You told me to think. You allowed me to think. You allowed me to talk, to walk. You allowed me to create just like you. You allowed me to, hmm, to speak, to sing. I can do everything you can do, Lord. But there's a difference between our human minds and God's minds. 
the mind that is fleshly has some issues and some problems in direction. Always has and always will. The mind that is filled with the knowledge of God and the power of God, that mind that is created to worship the Creator, what made it, that being, as we were made to worship Him, we were made to walk in His image. Uh, uh, in the beginning, He made man in His image. He made us in His image. He made us to laugh, to talk. God talks. God laughs. God creates. He made us to do likewise. But that fleshly mind is not to be trusted. That's what we're going to talk about. The Lord wants us to lean on Him. Okay, let's go back to that easy verse. Trust the Lord completely and don't depend on your own knowledge. With every step you take, think about what He wants. And He will help you go the right way. Think about what God wants. In order to find out what God wants, you've got to stay in contact with Him. Let me tell you what the fleshly mind does. The one that does not stay in contact with God. The fleshly mind has memories. Okay? Uh, those memories, they're like taking shorthand. Okay? I took shorthand in high school. And I enjoyed it. They call it Greg and Pitt. I enjoyed it. I was about a about eighty percent. I no, I could do eighty words per minute in shorthand. I enjoyed my brief forms. I enjoyed shorthand. You know, it was an easier way to write what you heard. But. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So, as I was saying, uh, let me get back to my notes. We're talking about uh, how important it is to lean on it. Now, I took shorthand in school, and uh, it was, you know, I could do, I got up to about 80 words per minute, and uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was a skill. And uh, we would sit in class, and we would uh, hear the teacher speak sentences, and uh, we'd write these sentences down, and, you know, they are brief forms. And that's how our memories are. Brief forms. You're not hearing or you're not writing the entire sentence. You're writing the sentence in its most shortest form. Um, the, break, the brain does shorthand of events every day. It fills in. It's... It, its memory processes is like filling in the dots. You know, you see something, one, there's a dot there, two, and before you know it, you go from one to two, filling in the dots with your pencil or your ink pen, and you have, when you're completed, a picture maybe of a flower or a picture of a puppy or a boat or something. That's how our memories are. Our brain reweaves experiences okay and sometimes while we're reweaving those experiences the memory is actually altered 
uh, and it's not taking on the complete and entire event. Okay? Um, what we do is we, according to our personalities, according to what we have experienced, we have a tendency to be biased. Okay? That's why we don't depend upon our own memories, okay? We, we have a tendency to alter our memories because we're taking shorthand with the brain, okay? That's why we don't lean on our own understanding, okay? Um, that's called a biased. You know, it's not real. It's not, it's not true, completely true. It is a memory that is in shorthand, and you're you're weaving the 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 events together, but you're leaving out some things. That's why we don't well, you know, we, we're biased in our, our thoughts and our opinions. Our opinions and our thoughts have a, a habit of amplifying or oversimplifying situations. Um, it has a way of uh, going to our our own understanding about what happened and not actually what happened. It prevents us. We're so busy with this type of thinking that it prevents us from learning from the experiences. And it will also uh, shut you down from attempting new experiences. You ever found yourself saying, I had a feeling it wasn't going to work. Oh, I just knew that wouldn't happen. You know, I, I read up that it also, um, it's from past experiences. We take a picture of the event and we swerve it toward what we feel, you know, what we feel and what we have experienced in the past. Okay? And we always take a wrong picture of it because we're leaning to our own understanding. It prevents us from figuring out uh, how to prevent actions in the future. Because we're so busy, I knew that wouldn't happen. Well, how could you have prevented that from happening? How could you have improved upon the situation so that you could do it next time? You could achieve what you wanted. Um, that's from past experiences. And we always, you know, we take the, a wrong shot. You know, that mental picture, click, click. We take a, a wrong shot because uh, it makes the world less chaotic, you know? We had that feeling, so we, we don't feel as, as crazy as, you know, hopeless. Um, biased opinions, biased past feelings keep us from being hurt the next time or even venturing toward achieving the next time. Oh, I knew that would happen. It's a cure from not attempting to trust in yourself, you know, or trust in the God that's in you. It's a cure. It's a snapshot of, it's a snapshot of what, what, you think would have happened wait a minute. it is a snapshot predicting the wrong in every situation and prevents you from even attempting to go on but the word says trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not to your own understanding okay trust the Lord completely don't depend on your own knowledge because in our minds, we're biased. 
We've got memories that fail us, like shorthand. It takes a little bit here, a little bit there, and he puts it together like uh, the mind dotting uh, a picture. And, and then we have a tendency to leave out things, to add to memories, okay? And this influences your walk, your faith walk, because that's what it is. It's a faith walk. I had a feeling that wasn't going to work. Okay? It prevents you from attempting to do anything that will give you pro progress in the future. It, it, it has a tendency to keep you stagnant. And, and we are lively stones. The Lord says that we flourish. We're supposed to flourish. And in order to flourish, We've got to lean on him, not on our own uh, understanding. Then there's this thing called impact bias. It refers to our inability to, to predict how a future event will make us feel or how long it will make us feel like that. You know, it's impact. What is this? What is going to, if I do this, how am I going to feel later on if I fail? If I fail, I'm not going to attempt that because I probably had to be in that situation for months or years. I knew it. I knew that would happen. This bias is true for the events that make us happy as well as those that make us sad. Sometimes we even... Uh, we have a tendency to misconstrue things, okay? Misconstrue, that's, that's a $2 word. You can misconstrue, you can be misconstruing, or you can be misconstrued. Misconstrues, strew means to uh, misunderstand the meaning of or take in wrong sense or misinterpret. We can misinterpret um, events through our own understanding. Uh, we imagine the future. We oversimplify the situation and our feelings about the situation. And sometimes we conveniently forget that most experiences are more textured and complicated than pure bias, okay? These minds of ours, child, that's an earthly mind. We, 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 you know, we, we got this hindsight from what happened before. Then we go into this fear mode. Then we get that, uh, we don't want to, you know, think about how that we could do better next time. So we just turn it aside. We're hurt from the past failures and we don't attempt to do anything that will progress us for the future. This is an earthly mind. Then we, we, want, we figure out, well, gee, if I do this and that and I attempt that, I'm going to be uncomfortable for X amount of times. This ain't going to make me happy. Or, oh, if I do this, I'm real, I'm going to be. Oh, I'll be in high cotton now. Let me go on and take that loan out. Let's find out what this is about. You know, we do that through relationships. You know, through through uh, things we just, you know, we venture into things. And we, our mind, our earthly mind tells us to, to oversimplify a situation. Sin is like that. Oh, I'm going to do this and it's going to make me feel good. But we don't think about what's going to happen if we do this, that, and the other. That's that earthly mind. Okay? Then uh, we think, some of us think, you know, our, our, our thoughts are distorted. We misunderstand things. We misjudge. We misconceive. Uh, we make mistakes. We mistranslate. 
That's why the Lord tells us lean on, trust in, and be confident in who? In the Lord, not in yourself. Don't lean to your own understanding because our own understanding, this is what we think. We're open-minded, okay? We're open. We're into this. Maybe uh, that's the, that new trend is what uh, maybe, hey, I'm open to that. That's what the world is thinking, you know? Love the one you're with. You know, if I do this, that, and the other, well. And we figure, this is what we think about ourselves. We're a good judge of the facts. We have to hear the facts before we judge. And we're attentive to reasoning. If you give us a good reason for doing it, we might just tend to do it. We're skilled at evaluating an argument. Now, we're good listeners, and we're going to think about this thing, and then we're going to make a judgment between the good facts and the bad facts. But what does our Lord say about the situation? The Lord says, and I'm going to use the easy-to-read version, Trust in the Lord completely and don't depend on your own knowledge. With every step you take, think about what he wants. He'll help you go the right way. The Lord knows the beginning from the ending. You know, our own understanding, we are so intricately and so, you know, we are, we are, God made this mind. You think a computer is smart? This mind, and, and pastor said we only use what? 30% of it? Okay. And my, I can't even recollect what he said. That's how bad uh, my own thought is. We only use a certain percentage of our minds. But God made this thing here. And he made it better than any computer on this earth. And if we trust in him, and not lean to our own understanding. And if we acknowledge him, he'll direct our path. Trust in him. Are you getting up early and trusting in God? Do you make him your first priority before you get out of bed? Before you go for that cup of coffee? Before you go for that, uh, 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 that shower? That breakfast? That job, I know he's able. I know he's able. His word said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean unto your own understanding. Our understanding is earthly. We're earthly. We don't think like him. We're made in his image, but we're made to follow him. He made the, what is the instruction booklet. He knows how we are to flourish. And, and he loves us. He's got unfailing love, like it says in Psalm 52 and 8. But I'm like an olive tree. I'm like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I'm flourishing. In God's house. The older we get, the more we flourish. Our outward man perishes, yes, but we have a tendency when we trust in God to flourish. To flourish. Don't lean to your own understanding. This is but dust. And from dust it came, and to dust it shall return. But our God is eternal. And he has unfailing love. And he wants the best for us. Okay? I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't use that snapshotted version of your memory. Uh-uh. Open up this word. Read what it says. Take it with you. Take it with you. Memorize it. Lord said to put it before you day and night. 
He'll direct you back. I'm Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case. I love you. God bless you. Probably kept you longer. Yes, I did. Forgive me. Forgive me. I tell you this. This word is pertinent. Watch these minds. Watch it. May God bless you. I'm just passing through.